How's it going, you guys? AZ Plow 21 back again with another pay per view in our UFC save in WMMA5. And here today we have UFC 305 Poirier versus Kennedy. Five title fights on this pay per view card. It is sure to be a good one. Got the lightweight, welterweight, featherweight, flyweight, and women's bantamweight interim title on the line here today. Should be a good one. Our next pay per view is going to be UFC 306 Lareda versus Dern. I've been kind of going crazy as far as like the five four title pay-per-view card so this one's only going to have one title fight but it's a good one valerie lareda and mackenzie dern that should be a great great card after that two title fights on the pay-per-view rose namayunas and stamp fairtex for the women's straw weight and macy chase on and cyborg for the women's featherweight title should be a good pay-per-view here today, though. So let's get into it. UFC 305 Poirier versus Kennedy. Uh, appreciate you guys, whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitch. Uh, links are down in the description below uh, for my Twitch, my Twitter, my Instagram, all that good stuff. You can also help me out by supporting me on Patreon. If you have not already done so, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, like I said, not sure if uh, it'll have been hit by this point, but once I do hit 600 subscribers, I will be uh, kind of making a little 600 subscriber Q&A video uh, based on the questions you guys have asked me, uh, both on the poll that I released on YouTube and also people have been DMing me questions on uh, Twitter and whatnot. So let's get into it. UFC 305 Poirier versus Kennedy live from Louisiana, Dustin's home state. Irish Joe Duffy taking on Christos Giagos in the lightweight division. And we have Christos Giagos getting the unanimous decision here today. The 10th win of his UFC career. Vink Pachel taking on Demarcus Jackson. Jackson, 16 and 5, making his UFC debut here today against Vink Pachel. And it is Jackson getting the unanimous decision victory here today. Both guys, 16 and 5, coming in. Demarcus leaving with that 17th victory. Boonmi Ojewole taking on Shea Wase a Obata in the featherweight division. And it is Boonmi Ojewole taking out Shawase Obata. Wow, okay. Two and two in the UFC she is now. A couple losses to her name, but Obata, very surprising. She was, uh, thought she would kind of get it done into the UFC, but she has been very, very disappointing thus far. Moving along, Samara Guida taking on Ugne Woloshin, also in the featherweight division. And it is Samara Guida getting the unanimous decision. She's now 3-1 in her UFC career thus far, only loss being to Megan Anderson. So maybe something to look out for there in Samara Guida. Tony Gravely taking on JPBs here, I believe, in the flyweight or bantamweight division. It is bantamweight. The South African looking for the 18th win, and he does not get it. Losing to Tony Gravely via TKO in a leg kick. Hopefully he is not severely injured from that leg kick. Jim Crute taking on EC Fiti Kefu in the light heavyweight division. Australia's Fiti Kefu making his UFC debut here today after being at one championship. And Jim Crute welcomes him with a knockout in round number one. Anna Juliton taking on Shante Buote. In the flyweight division, the Canadian getting it done via TKO in round number one. Got to love it. Aliyah Hodgson taking on Kana Watanabe in the bantamweight division. Hodgson looking for the ninth win of her career. Watanabe looking for the 15th. And it's Aliyah Hodgson via unanimous decision. She is now 2-0 in the UFC. Got to love it. Uh, she fought at featherweight her first time up. And now she's back down to bantamweight. Muhammad Berkamov taking on Curtis Millinder at 175. And in the welterweight division, we have Curtis Millinder coming out on top, 8-7 and seven now in his UFC career, winner of his last three fights. Ryan Darth Bader taking on Alonzo Menafield in our final prelim in the light heavyweight division. Menafield, number 15 in the light heavyweight division, off two straight wins, loses to Ryan Darth Bader. The 32nd win of his career. He's now 18th win in the UFC. And he's now winner of two out of his last two fights. To the main card we go in our first out of five title fights here on this pay-per-view main card. Everyone give me your $65. Thank you very much. Norma the Immortal Dumont taking on Lara Procopio in the Bantamweight division. Dumont. 
three wins in a row, including Macedo and Ronda Rousey. On the other side, Lara Pacopio, who's been very low key throughout this entire save, but you can see she has not lost a fight since 2021. Insane. Her last three wins, Gina Mazzani, Irena Aldana, and Ronda Rousey herself. It's for the interim UFC Women's Bantamweight title. It's up for grabs and let's get it going. Well, Brazilians going at it in Louisiana. Procopio looking to unleash. Freestyle Lara Procopio. Norma Dumont and some of my older saves in this game would usually do pretty well. Procopio with a two punch combo. Nothing really happening. Exchanging strikes. Counter jab does not land for Dumont. No jab hits. Nearly halfway through round number one of this first title fight. A couple quick punches from Procopio, who looks to be the more dangerous fighter, but nothing really has happened in round number one. Dumont with a left cross. Left kick to the body. Kick to the rib cage. One minute left to go in round number one. Dumont looking a bit tense as round one comes to a close. First round to Procopio. At least in the eyes of the commentary team. Right hand lands for Dumont. A low kick. Getting parried. Siding kick to the legs. Right hook. Nice right hook lands for Procopio. Halfway through round number two. Quick left hook. Again, for the interim bantamweight championship of the world. I mean, Aspen Ladd waiting in the, in the wing. She's on a hiatus right now. If she's not back within a year, we'll just have to strip her. Kick to the leg. Two punches absorbed. Great movement, avoiding him. Under a minute left to go in round two. Right cross just misses. Her guard remaining solid. Both fighters coming in to strike. Kick to the lead leg as round two expires. Procopio up 20 to 18. One, two. Great right hook. Both fighters meeting in the center. Right cross just misses. Halfway through the round. Can't get him going with a leg kick. Dumont moving around the cage. One minute left to go. Right cross gets blocked. Clean right hand. Third round. Now, not really much has gone on. Great right hook for Procopio. Have not had a takedown or a big strike yet in the fight. Which is going to make it very weird... <laughs> to score, even though they are saying that Procopio's won all three rounds. <sighs> Quick one, two. Apparently, the leg strikes are starting to get to Dumont. Procopio has suffered a gash under her eye. Okay. Dumont trying to gain control. Left kick to the ribs. Dumont starting to put it on late. Round four comes to an end. Procopio might be up by four rounds. She is cut under her eye, though. Low kick. Copio looking tired. Misses a right hook. Can't find the right hook. Neither can Dumont. Nearly halfway through round number five. It's starting to look like Lara Procopio. Dumont with a knee to the thigh. Another knee to the thigh. Halfway through the fifth and final round. Dumont probably needs a finish. Doesn't look like she's going to get it. Procopio's up against the cage. 
They bring him back to the center, and that is going to be it. Powerful right hook. Dumont is out. What? Ladies and gentlemen, with one second left to go in round number five, your winner by knockout. And now the interim UFC bantamweight champion of the world is Lara Procopio. And she wants to fight Marina Mocknat Kina next. That is a very interesting call out. Um, but congratulations to Lara Procopio. She waited until the literally the very last second to get the knockout and she gets it done. Ronnie Sade taking on Naoki Inoue for the UFC Flyweight Championship of the World. Inoue wins over Pasio and Jose Torres on the other side. This is his second attempt at the title, by the way. Uh, last one over Ali Bagutinov got submitted in round number two. On the other side, you got Ronnie Sade. Our boy just won the title over Bagutinov. Back in June, UFC 302. We are now here at 305, making his first defense Gotta love it. He is the underdog to Naoki in a way. As we are underway with our second of five title fights. 31 years old, Naoki in a way, the younger fighter. Both with very impressive records. Both guys are going to be around for quite a long time. Right hook lands. Coming together to strike. Nice high. Whoa, whoa. Really hurt him. Sending him down to the mat. Inoue moving in quickly. Repeated shots to the head. Referee Dan Merkliata calls a stop to this contest at 3 minutes. At 1 minute 55 seconds of the very first round. Declaring your winner by TKO. And new undisputed UFC flyweight champion of the world. Naoki Inoue. Wow. Inoue winning the title. And probably is going to welcome back... Ali Baga Utinov once he is back. That is insane. Oh boy. Two new champions here tonight. Will there be a third? Hamzat Dalkiev, the current featherweight champion of the world after beating Max Holloway and then defending against Combs Ekpo. Now, his second defense against Chase Hooper. Hooper lost to Jose Aldo, then got big wins over Chad Mendez and Austin Lingo. Before that, look at that big winning streak. Leads him to his first title shot at age 24. That is crazy. Let's get it going. For the UFC Featherweight Championship of the World, Dalgiev and Hooper. Hooper does not have a fight team, I just noticed. Flurry of activity, not much going on though. Hooper coming together. Right cross just misses for Dalgiev. Sambo fighter with a jujitsu guy on the other side. Left kick to the body. Two fighters engage. Ooh, blood is visible on Hooper. He may have gotten cut here in the first round. That is not a good sign. 30 seconds left to go in round number one. Time runs out on number one. Hooper might have come out on top. Hooper still bleeding. Engaging in the center. Right hand taken on the gloves. Neither can really land a, a shot, apparently. Very timid, I guess. I don't want to say timid, just very defensive, maybe, these guys. Big head kick attempt. Nothing really lands. Quick head kick. Uh-oh. Dogia backs off. Nothing to do but cut the cage is the only reason he's still upright. That is it. Oh my goodness. Dalgiev was up against the cage, taking repeated shots. And your winner via TKO and the third new champion tonight the undisputed featherweight champion of the world is Chase the Teenage Dream Hooper wow new featherweight champion is Chase Hooper as we arrive at our co-main event of the evening will it be four out of four Ismail Nardiev the welterweight champion 
He's defended it three times. Beat Luque. Defended against Warley Alves. Defended against Nate Diaz. And defended against Vicente Luque again. <coughs> His next challenger. Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Two straight wins over Wonderboy and Michael Venom Page. This guy's not getting any younger. And he still has that high-level international. Might be able to rub off on him. I mean, he's only high-level national in America. If Nardiev can knock him out or do something crazy, Nardiev might be uh, pretty impressive, pretty popular in his own right pretty soon. It is our co-main event for the Welterweight Championship of the World. Let's get it going. Again, Josh Rosenthal is your referee after apparently he did not have a very good fight that last time out. Apparently he let Dalgiev get uh, his shit rocked for quite a quite a bit. Putting back kick fails to land. It looks like it might be a quick night here for Ismail Nardiev. Counter jab misses. Masvidal tries to hit a jab. Crunching right hook. Pressuring Masvidal. Counter left hand. Misses a low kick. Imagine if Masvidal knocks out Nardiev here and wins the title. That'd be insane. Masvidal evades a big right punch. Masvidal with a counter left hand. Coming together to strike. Masvidal with a left cross. Yeah, pretty exciting round one. And they say Nardiev took it. Back underway in round number two. Right hook gets ducked. Clean right hand. Uh-oh, dazed and unsteady. Flying knee strike, but he can't get it. Ooh, he almost knocked out Masvidal there with a knee strike. Imagine the irony there. Lands the left cross. Two fighters engage. Off balance. Roundhouse cook. Cleverly executed feint. I mean, Nardiev's kind of just schooling him, really. Right head kick. Uh-oh. Masvidal immediately covers up. Cage is the only reason dodges a vicious overhand right. Wow. Masvidal still staying up. So he got knocked out, but he landed kind of against the cage, just like in the last fight. And he was able to get out of there. Nardiev very clearly in control. Powerful right hand of the body. It is over. It is the body shot that makes Jorge Masvidal crumble. And still, your welterweight champion is Ismail Nardiev. With the UFC welterweight title around his race, he celebrates continuing his reign as champion. And that brings us to our main event of the evening for the UFC lightweight championship of the world. Jeremy, British Columbia, JBC Kennedy. Big wins his last couple times out. Charles Oliveira, Gavin Hughes, and then Conor McGregor. Knocking out Conor McGregor. In round number three, still not very popular, but has earned his shot at the title against Dustin the Diamond Poirier. High level international popularity. This guy's got it going on. We got Moises, Duffy, Gavin Hughes, Mateus Gamrot, and then Carlos Diego Fajeda beating him for the champion. The championship, I should say. Insane. It is our main event here at UFC 305, Poirier and Kennedy. Kennedy is the odds-on favorite in this one. The Canadian looking to get it done and bring it back to British Columbia in Poirier's territory. Josh Rosenthal, still your referee. In front of the hometown crowd, what can Dustin do? Roundhouse kick to the body. Poirier with a counter right. Nothing really significant landing. Early on here in round number one. This are lightweight championship main events. Appreciate you guys for watching, whether it's on YouTube or Twitch. Once again, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. A lot more WMMA5 videos coming out. Big takedown. Kennedy trying to pass the guard. Attempted sweep, no good, as round one comes to a close. And 10-9 Kennedy is what they say. Round two underway.
Of course, I've got my W3 save that I've been streaming all the time. Um, I've been... Uh, I, I've recorded a couple extra vid crunching left hook, a couple extra videos. The uh, retro sports gaming videos are back. Uh-oh, rubbery legs. Snaps his head back. Back of the head. Poirier is out cold? Oh my god. Dustin Poirier has been knocked out with a knee by Jeremy Kennedy, who has taken the lightweight championship of the world. In a fantastic main event fight. Holding the UFC lightweight title aloft, he celebrates the new champ being the new champion and warns he is intending to have a very long reign. Congratulations to Jeremy Kennedy into hostile territory and able to get it done over Dustin Poirier. That is insane. Nice, nice pay-per-view revenue. Popularity increases as well. Fight of the night for sure was the main event. Who are we giving some money to? We got Naoki Inoue getting that 100k. We've got Shante Buate. We've got Jim Crute. We've got Bunmi Oje Wole all getting $100,000. Highest paid fighters of the night, Dustin Poirier made half a million. Jorge Masvidal made about half of that. Naoki Inoue, Ismail Nardiet. Got four new champions to speak of. Appreciate you guys for watching. Like I said, I'm AZ Plyo 21. Our next pay-per-view is going to be UFC 306. That one's only going to have one title fight. That's going to be Valerie Lareda defending against Mackenzie Dern. That should be a crazy one. But I am AZ Plyo 21, and I will see you guys at the fights.